everybody, my name is Born Isaac Bear from Bears on Slam, and today we are going to be doing modular arithmetic. Wow, that's a big word or big two words. But what could modular arithmetic mean? Well, modular arithmetic is basically about working with remainders. So, give me a random four digit number right now. Uh. Two five nine seven. Okay, two thousand five hundred ninety seven. So now let's say we divide that by four. Okay, what is the remainder there? Well, let's see. Here we have twenty four. So the quotient gets six. So we have one ninety seven. Uh, so nearest is sixteen, which gives me thirty seven. And then you subtract thirty six. And you get a rem six forty nine with a remainder of one. But in modular arithmetic, we don't care about the quotient. We only care about the remainder, and of course the divisor. Sorry, I'm forgetting my division terms. And by the way, you might have noticed that. And by the way, you might have noticed. That twenty five ninety seven is simply equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Now the same rule applies in modular arithmetic, except this time we don't really care about this stuff. We can say twenty five ninety seven is congruent to what is the remainder one mod four. That means it can be written as one plus four times the number n. In this case, the number n is the quotient. But as I said, we don't care. All right. So this is actually really useful for a lot of things with divisibility. So, for example, let's say we have I don't know. Let's. Demonstrate another rule of modular arithmetic. So, give me a random two-digit number. Ah, uh, seven eight. Seventy eight. You just spout out two random digits. And now, let's say we have a random number five. Yeah, so five. So seventy eight is congruent to well three mod five, meaning that it is three plus the nearest multiple of five. Or you can say that this is equal to or congruent to minus two mod five because it is two less than the nearest multiple of five. For example, seventy-eight minus three is seventy-five, and seventy-eight plus two is eight. But now I'm going to introduce something very cool. So I'm actually going to do this on a smaller scale. So thirteen is congruent to Seven mod is congruent to five mod eight. Let's say. So now let's put all of this stuff on a number line, not a real number line, but we're just going to be putting all of our numbers in a line. So let's actually go till fifteen. So. Sixteen. So now let's write this out again. Okay. So thirteen is congruent to five mod eight. That means there's a difference here from thirteen to five of eight. Now that difference can vary from eight to some multiple of eight, but here eight is directly the difference between five and thirteen. But now here comes a little trick. Thirteen is congruent to five mod eight, right? Well, thirteen plus three is also congruent to five plus three mod eight. Don't believe me? Well, thirteen plus three is sixteen, right? And five plus three is eight. Well, the difference there is eight as well. Although you might also say this is congruent to zero mod eight. Since both of these are divisible by eight, okay. So that 
is a really useful thing. But now, let me introduce something even cooler to you. So let's say we have seven is congruent to, oh yeah, by the way, this also works for subtraction too, if you didn't see that reverse, because addition and subtraction, basically the same thing. So let's say seven is congruent to four, or okay, seven is congruent to one mod three. You can all agree on that, right? Because seven is equal to one plus three times two. Okay, so now, we also know that 8 is congruent to 2 mod 3. Now get this. Or rather, let's actually do this in a more fun way. 9 is, or rather 10 is congruent to 1 mod 3 as well. Now here's a funny little thing. What if we add these up? Well, 17 is still congruent to 2 mod 3. Because 17 is congruent, uh, it's equal to 2 times th uh, 2 plus 3 times 5. So why does this work? Well, 7 is equal to 1 plus 3 times 2. 10 is equal to 1 plus 3 times 3. So, adding these up, let's see what we get. Well, we get 2 plus 3 times 5. Note how uh, 3 plus a, 3 times a plus 3 times b is equal to 3 times a plus b. This little outside thing, which is our mod, does not change. All right, so we've established two rules. And let's write them down in the corner here. So rule one is that if given that A is congruent to B mod M is that one A plus C is congruent to B plus C mod M given that C is just a random integer. Number two a minus C is congruent to B minus C mod M, but that is also absorbed in this one, considering that C is an integer, so it can be positive or negative. So our second rule will be that, let's also say, not just given, oh, sorry, okay. Let's say rules given that A is congruent to B mod M, and C is congruent to D mod M. So, number one, A plus E, if E is some random integer, is congruent to B plus E mod M. Number two, A plus C is congruent to B plus D mod M. Okay, those are two rules that we've discovered so far. But now, what if I took this example and did something with it again? In this case, I'm gonna do something crazy here, but you better be ready for it, because I'm gonna multiply these. But first, before I multiply these, I'm actually gonna mix this up a little, saying that eight is gonna move to two mod three. Wow, scary. Am I right? What's even worse, 11 is also congruent to 2 mod 3. What will we get here? Well, 8 times 11 is very obviously 88. That's congruent to 4 mod 3. Does that work? Well, let's see. 88 minus 4, or rather, 4 mod 3 is congruent to 1 mod 3, obviously, since 4 minus 3 is 1. If 88 is congruent to 1 mod 3, then 88 minus 1 should be 3 times something. And 87 is 3 times 29. This works. Wow. So now we know that A times C is congruent to B times D mod M. And, of course, 
but I just refer to a e is congruent to b times e mod m as well. All right. So why is that true? Well, that's simply because any number n is congruent to n mod three. So, uh, no, not n mod three. Any number n is congruent to n mod m. So, finally, let's do rule number five. And rule number five is also a pretty tricky one, but given this rule number three that a times c is congruent to b times d mod m, then we can actually manipulate that. So eight is congruent to two mod three, right? Let's write that one more time. Eight is congruent to two mod three as well. But now, let's see what happens if we multiply them. We noticed that multiplying them worked before, but does it work this time? Let's see. Eight times eight is sixty-four. Congruent to two times two is four. Mod three. Sixty-four minus four is sixty. Which is a multiple of three, so yes, it does work. And given this, we can repeat this equation any number of times and figure out that raising both sides to any power will still give us the same thing. So five twelve is still congruent to eight mod three. Want proof? Well. Oh, you, you want to take a break? No. Okay. How long? Uh, just five more minutes. Yeah. Wow, it's a long lecture. Okay. So five twelve minus eight is five o four. How do we divide that into three? Well, ninety nine times five is equal to four ninety five. Ninety nine is a multiple of three. And then if we add nine here, which is also a multiple of three, we get five o four. So it is confirmed that five hundred four is a multiple of three. So this works. Wow. So that means five a to the e is congruent to b to the e mod m. Wow. All right. And that is all of our rules. Thank you, everybody, for watching. See you in the next one.